Do you know if you're an extrovert or an introvert? Do you even know what those terms mean? Alongside Alice, Martha, and myself, we're going to try to explain to you the history, science, daily life, and the benefits of being an extrovert. So stick around. All right, let's begin with the history first. We got three main players. The first one is Carl Gustav Jung. He introduced his personality theory in the 1920s. It consisted of two main attitudes, which we already know as the extrovert and the introvert. The extrovert wants contact with the outside world, but we can say the opposite about the introvert. They want their energy going inside. The next main player is Hans Einzig. He contributed to Jung's work by developing on the theory and what makes the extrovert and the introvert. Or he developed the idea that the difference is how the extrovert and the introvert recharge their mental energy. The extrovert will recharge by talking to people and having social interaction. The introvert will recharge their energy by staying inside, doing some project by themselves, or doing some activity by themselves. The last main player is Jerome Kagan. He developed the temperament toddlers, which said that in his theory, that whatever characteristics we are born with, they will keep developing until our adulthood. One way that he did it, he created an experiment with, with a lot of babies. He exposed those babies to external stimuli. That included loud noises and weird smells. About 20% of those babies, they started crying when they were in contact with the external stimuli. About 40% of the babies stay calm, and the last 40% had a mixture between crying and staying calm. The 40% that stayed calm was proved in the future that they develop extrovert characteristics. Right, now that we got history out the way, let's talk about science. The main genetic difference is that extroverts have two met, met alleles. It's associated with better per memory performance and attention task. The function of this allele is to improve dopamine transfusion in the prefrontal cortex. But under stressful situation, its effects seem to be diminished. Our human ancestors showed this difference. When one human had one met, met copy of the allele, they tended to hide more from predators than those that had two copies of the allele. The ones with the two copies of the allele tended to go out for to explore and to hunt more often. The two chemicals that play the biggest role on how one becomes an extrovert and introvert are dopamine and acetylcholine. Dopamine is related to a lot of mental functions, but in this case we're going to be talking about the rewarding system and making somebody feel good. Both extroverts and introverts have the same amount of dopamine and acetylcholine. The difference lies on how the brain will react to both neurotransmitters. difference between an extrovert and an introvert will be found in the central nervous system, more specifically on the ascending reticular rewarding system, which is located in the brainstem. The main function of this system is to maintain optimal levels of stimulation. When one person has an optimal level of stimulation, they will be more chill, content, or relaxed. When the same person has less than optimal levels of stimulation, they will start going into boredom and possibly depression. The opposite can be said when they have greater than optimal levels of stimulation. They will go into a stress, anxiety attacks, or maybe even episodes of panic. Another portion of the central nervous system that is affected by the personality traits are the cortical arousal and the sensory threshold. The cortical arousal is defined by how much percentage of the brain is active at rest. I don't know if you remember, but when we were talking about Hans, he was talking about brain activity. This is where the brain activity comes to mind. The extroverts usually have less percent of the brain activity than introverts. Sensory threshold is the amount of stimulation needed to reach the optimal level of arousal or stimuli. Extroverts have a higher threshold than introverts. Because of this, extroverts usually need more dopamine than introverts.
they tend to draw energy by being surrounded by others. Often, in school, you will see them as being the most active ones in class. They are more likely to participate in class also. They also tend to be in clubs or in sports because they thrive in that type of environment. Socially, they tend to have a lot of friends because since they enjoy being by others, they find it easy to make friends. Socially, they have a lot of friends. They also find it easy to make friends. Extroverts also enjoy attention. Just for example, this baby. This baby prefers to be surrounded by others and also loves getting attention than being by themselves because they enjoy that. They seem to be more energetic in those type of cases. Another thing about extroverts is that they find it easy to flirt with others. Not necessarily easy, but they don't. It wouldn't be hard for them to go up to a person that they seem to like and flirt with them or try to get their number. Extroverts. Also, are very open people. They, just like how you see, she's happy. Extroverts will show when they're happy. They also will, won't hide when they are upset. They show when they don't find it hard to to keep their feelings to themselves. So. In conclusion, extroverts enjoy being with others. If they have to choose, they would prefer to be in a group because they love the attention, they love the energy, because that's where they get their energy from. is math theories and i'll be talking about benefits of loving in next over the first one is leadership they do have a lot of benefits in leadership because they can handle very well social situations and they also have no problem at all making connections and be communicating with new people they it could be a very good fit for them to be leaders because they can get the knowledge and the social experiences and also social experiences can lead for them to have a better job and a better job will likely to spend more time with people and not be alone and their their um job skills improve by collaborating with others and help them and uh, work together and a job opportunities they it could be very good for them all careers um is lawyer sales manager public relations nurse teachers financial advisor and even flight attendant because it offers the level of social interactions for them also extroverts are described as being full of life energy and be very positive they can gain inspiration examine from talking and just discussing um ideas with people so